All right, I finally watched The Northman. A lot of people have asked about it. I really didn't want to at first because I have such low expectations for anything involving Vikings because of how much they have been butchered. And the trailer led me to believe that it's yet another generic vengeance story, which it is, but it's surprisingly well done they actually seem to have done their research. I mean, we've been subjected to so much ridiculous nonsense that the label Viking has been slapped onto, like the TV show of the same name, where we have all of this going on, including when you go to your local armor, and it's like, so what type of armor you want? And you're like, you know apple pie, right? And he's like, say no more. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes for all kinds of interests, be it video and animation, photography, or other visual arts, music, writing, web design, productivity, etc. Each class is divided into chapters, which you can easily navigate and come back to at any time. There are also reviews, and it tells you which skill level it's intended for. So I was browsing Skillshare and figured it would be pretty neat to go Super Saiyan. <sighs> And somebody taught me how to do it. Push-ups, sit-ups, and plenty of juice. Well, unfortunately, I don't have Saiyan genetics, so I had to use a class on After Effects, which taught me some neat tricks I didn't know before. And of course, learning more about After Effects is always useful for a content creator, particularly if you don't have an editor. Anyway, check it out. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Some of the stuff we've been confronted with, with a supposedly historical setting, Looks like the prop department raided the local value village and went to the leather section, grabbed everything, cut it up into little bitty pieces, and then randomly stitched it back together and called it armor. And don't even get me started on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. You remember the old times when there was actual historical research behind Assassin's Creed? Pepperidge Farm remembers. So at the start of the Northmen, when I saw reasonable helmets, male hauberks, and actual center grip shields, I was like, whoa, that's a breath of fresh air. And then seeing a real Jermenbu helmet, I was seriously impressed. They did take some artistic license here and there. For example, there are leather helmets, which we don't have any archeological evidence of. Unsurprisingly, organic material just doesn't preserve very well. So we don't know if they may or may not have used them. There's a serious limit on what we know. So some liberties are going to have to be taken and it doesn't need to be approved by the Elder Council of Reenactors or anything. As I said, I have such low expectations at this point that seeing anything halfway historical in a Viking setting is pretty neat. I mean, we already have to be grateful whenever we don't see fur armor, right? Uh, there is fur being worn in the Northmen as actual winter clothing and just an accessory. It's not the entire outfit made of fur. And it's also worn by berserkers. You know, to them, it has symbolic meaning. When you think about it, berserkers were basically drug-fueled real-life furries of the Viking Age. Sort of. Don't you dare quote me on that. This is not a statement backed up by historical sources. Anyway, speaking of the scene with berserkers, there is some crazy stuff going on, which you can kind of brush aside as, hey, it's berserkers, they're certifiably crazy, and uh, they pride themselves on rushing into battle with no armor and, you know, just no care for their own safety, showing off what giga chads they are and all that. Um, there's some dual wielding going on. Which again, in case of Berserkers, you can let that slip for the most part, even though they were known as shield biters. In their frenzied rage, supposedly they bit the rims of their shields. Shields. And in fact, most of them actually carry shields in this scene. The main character doesn't, because hey, he's the main character, he's got plot armor, etc. He proceeds to dual wield an axe and a scrama sax in reverse grip, which is pretty silly, but again, berserker, main character, low standards, 
fine. <laughs> I'll let that slide. This other guy, on the other hand, uh, I, I can't, even in this context, I really can't forgive that. I mean, he's running toward the fortified settlement that they're assaulting while the defenders are shooting arrows at them and throwing spears. And he has the shield on his back and he keeps it on his back. It's like this Canadian thing, you know, when people r walk around with a toque on their head, which is a warm winter hat, by the way, and shorts. It's like, you can't decide, can you? Are you cold or aren't you? It's the same thing here. Do you want protection or don't you? You can't decide. Like, either be a giga chad badass who doesn't need protection and just charge in there without a shield or use the frickin' shield. <laughs> Why are you just carrying it on your back? Is this some sort of plan B? Like if he decides to run away like a coward, he doesn't want to be shot in the back. He doesn't want to be found with arrows sticking out of his back. So there's evidence of his cowardice. I don't know. The fighting overall is not the most authentic I've seen, but it's not terrible by any means. It's pretty good overall. And uh, there are some neat details, like in the raid scene, he actually climbs the palisade using his ax, which is mentioned in the historical sagas. What's also mentioned in the sagas is catching a thrown spear out of the air and throwing it back, which is definitely doable in real life with good reflexes and hand-eye coordination. It's funny when a movie with the most realistic depiction of Vikings I've seen in a long time, maybe ever, also has the main character fighting a Draugr, an undead, and uh, has Odin make an appearance. But at the same time, the way it's presented, we don't know if this is actually supposed to be happening or if it's symbolic or if the main character is hallucinating it or dreaming or something like that, which seems quite plausible. It also has convincing longhouses and someone clearly researched art styles of the Viking period. It's also kind of surprising to see a revenge story where the main character is not the superhero capable of taking on 10 enemies at once and winning. He has to be methodical about it. He has to ambush them at night and things like that. He can't just fight his way out of a massive horde, even though he finds a supposedly magic sword, which once again, we don't know for sure if this is actually supposed to be magic. So overall, I have to say, The Northman surprised me. Uh, it's quite a good movie in and of itself, regardless of historical accuracy and all that. And they clearly put some effort into researching the topic, which is more than can be said about many who take on Viking scenarios. The only reason why it bothers me really is because it's often presented as history. I mean, historical fantasy sometimes, but it kind of bothers me when they reference actual historical events and personalities and even specific uh, points in time, but then it just goes full on anachronistic LARPers pretending to be Vikings, stuff like that. Actual Skyrim, on the other hand, is a fantasy world you know, clearly inspired by Vikings, but they're Nords, they're not Vikings, so you can do with that whatever the heck you want. Anyway, this is a pet peeve of mine and probably something that most people don't care about, which is fine, but hey, if you come to my channel, this is probably the kind of crap you're looking for. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting and uh, have a good one.